Oh yeah, that's right. It's time for episode nine. Hi, my name is Steve. I'm with Hyperfire, and you're watching Show Us Your Humvee. In Show Us Your Humvee, we feed your Humvee fix with Humvees from around the world. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of our weekly episodes. The purpose of this series is to give you a deeper look into cool Humvees than you would get from a few pictures on social media. To be featured in Show Us Your Humvee, we need at least the year and model of your Humvee, where your Humvee lives, and some background on what makes it cool, like if you know any of your Humvee's history, upgrades you've made, how you use it in a unique way, etc. Send that info to Show Us Your Humvee at GearReport.com, and I'll put it in a future episode of Show Us Your Humvee. We'll start off this week in Aurora, Colorado, to meet this little beauty named Greta. Oh, not that sniveling little shit. I'm talking about the real Greta. Theo didn't share many details on his blacked out helmet top Humvee, but I see a nice helmet top, X doors all around, an early style brush guard, airlift bumper, and a swing out tire carrier, and even a set of cup holders, I mean antenna mounts. It looks like the whole truck was dipped in bed liner. It's even wearing Wrangler MTRs on 24 bolt wheels of the evenly spaced variety. It's a nice looking truck, Theo. Moving south to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, one of the more common questions I see in the Humvee discussion groups goes a little something like this. Hey, can I put 40s on my Hummer? Well, yeah, apparently you can because John did. I'm really digging the look of this slant back, sitting up high on black Rhino wheels and wearing Cooper 40 inch tires. Other cool features on this blacked out beast include a Laverne brush guard, supplemental armor doors, fording intake and exhaust stacks, LED lights and light bar, and a red dot air conditioner. If you like your Humvees big and mean, this slant back certainly fits the part. We'll wrap up this week's Humvee extravaganza in Kennesaw, Georgia. One of my favorite Humvees that I have driven just happens to be the flagship of the Damage Control Customs fleet. It's a hundred thousand dollar truck, so if you break it, got it sold. Have fun. You want to drive? <laughs> Super slow. I'm not going to do that. So. Ruben calls his baby Mastercraft after the maker of the rather rare and expensive seats that cradle the buttocks of his passengers. This 2002 M1045A2 sports a long list of upgrades. Just by virtue of being a third generation Humvee of the A2 variety, it has better brakes, better transmission, the 6.2 liter engine, a better transfer case, better hubs, better half shaft, high back seats and much more. But it also has a long list of additional upgrades like the engine was upgraded to a 6.2 liter GEP turbo. It has an 80 mile an hour instrument cluster, supplemental armor doors, locking door handles, upgraded air intake, less restrictive air filter, rock sliders, MTR tires on 24 bolt rims with a spare on a Rhino tire carrier, airlift bumper, bumper steps, that's a rare one you don't see very often, teardrop shackles, a hitch extender, mud flaps, all around upgraded lights to include LED marker lights, LED tail lights, LED instrument cluster lights, upgraded LED headlights, it also has the Mastercraft front bucket seats and Mastercraft rear jump seats for which the truck was named. There's even new insulation in the roof, a fully functional true military turret, a custom aluminum cupola. Ruben often mounts a decommissioned M2 machine gun up top. He has the big pusher version of the Ibis Tech front bumper. In the bumpers hiding a 12,000 pound electric winch. He has a hood-mounted Pioneer tool tray, T-50 
tinted windows. Here's the grand tour of Mastercraft as of October 2018. Yeah, I'm aware this was a little while ago. Ruben's been hard at work adding additional features since we shot this video. All right. Ready? I'm ready. You ready? Yeah, of course I'm always Let's ready. give the people what they want. So this is a 1045. It's an M1045 A2 truck, which means it all comes with a four-speed transmission. But of course, we were not satisfied with that. So we went ahead and if you can tell from just looking at the doghouse, we've gone ahead and dropped in a turbo engine in this. So it's got a 6.5 GEP turbocharged engine, uh, the four-speed transmission, and 12K setup all the way back. Nice. We've got the Mastercraft bucket seats in the front. Yes, very cool. My favorite are the back seats. Yeah, yeah of course. Because that's just badass how it <laughs> folds up. Seriously, I so, love that. Yeah, these are also made by Mastercraft. I believe they're used by LMTV Gunners. Mm. That's the gunner seats for LMTV. And of course, the beauty of it is if you want to get to your... Underneath your uh, seat pan, mm -hmm. you don't have to take the whole seat out. I know, you just that's, put that's up, awesome. Fold it up, get to whatever you need to do, put it back. And that's a, right. that's a comfortable seat, too. Oh, yeah. I think it's significantly comfortable, right? I mean, yeah. It the, lays... So on the front seats, there's a little bit of a rise right yep. here that kind of rubs against the my hip. Yep. So, But I'm, um, I'm 265 pounds. Hmm. I have no problem with going through that. You know, I think yeah, maybe because yeah. you're taller than me, yeah. maybe that's why you have a little bit of a problem. But I'm 265 uh, pounds. I'm, I'm delicate. <laughs> <laughs> with delicate flower. You see we've got the rock sliders on this truck. Yep. We've got the supplemental armor doors. Yep. Cool. With locking door handles, of course, new hardware. Get everything working right. If we come around this way, we've got the forging intake, forging. If you look, you'll see all of the lights, all the mar uh, all of the reflectors have all been replaced. These are all LED lights. Yep. We've got the JW headlights. We've got the armored grill, which is what comes with them. I personally don't like the armored grills. I feel like they restrict air, but it depends on who yep. you ask. Yep. Um, they're cool. They're there. Um, we've got the 24 bolt rims on the MTR uh, MTR tires. Dude. Yeah. What's the date code? <laughs> Probably expired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what the date code is. Honestly, they work. They run. They work. They're good. Yeah. We've got the most important added feature right here for my daughter right here. It's oh, yeah. my little Rose. Goes awesome. with me everywhere we go. Yeah, that's that's her doing right there. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I want you to focus actually, on your little sticker there. Yeah, pop inside. Inside we've actually even got a 80 mile an hour speedometer. Look at that. Nice. You know, you've got your 60 mile, and of course, we've got the Mini Me. Yeah, yeah. Mini Me is carrying around. You've got your little cell phone charger. We've got a converter to a 12 volt underneath the seat. Uh huh. And we'll run more converters and such up in the front once we finish running the Icon 360 lights. Oh, wow. Nice. The tack up there. Yeah. And of course, you've got the IBIS knockout glass. And we'll leave it at that. <laughs> we don't want to talk too much about that. We've got the turret up top. We've got the M2. This is a decommissioned one. It used to be a real functional one, but right now it's been decommissioned, so we just use it as a demo. Nice. And if we come back around, we're almost done. So we've got um, three antennas on this truck with three different purposes. This is the AS3900. This is what you're going to use with your current comms. So if you have any of mm -hmm. the current comm systems that you want to run. This is a brand new one and we'll work on it. This is an AS3449. It's not ideal, but it does function in the ham radio ranges. Oh wow. So okay. if you wanted to run ham in the lower frequency ranges for the ham, this one will work on it. This is again AS3449. Right. This is an AS, uh, I believe, uh, I want to see if this is the MX or the AS and I'm forgetting. This is the MX. This is the MX 60, 6707. Essentially, this is a much older model, but the benefit of this one is, unlike the newer models, it actually has a little lever where you can adjust the 
the frequency range and you can put it down to the 30 oh, 30 megahertz frequency yeah put a small swr meter in the front and run your um cb radio off of this antenna mm -hmm. again not ideal for a cb antenna but if you mm -hmm. wanted to use a military antenna you make it work um and you wanted to run a cb this would be the one you probably want to go with if you wanted to run a ham radio and but you wanted to stick to military antenna this is what you wanted to stick with nice. and we're almost done of course we've got the a2 airlift bumper and we've got the um, our modular platform steps that we manufacture these and we sell them so they're pretty convenient for stepping up and going inside the truck and of course the whole truck in the exterior has been repainted with car paint mm -hmm. got your mug on there I you know honestly I was a little skeptical on the value of these because mm -hmm. they take up a lot of space you know make it yep. what 12 13 inches longer yep but even just since yesterday the number of times getting in and out they are awesome they're very really, functional yeah putting yeah. your you know I've, I've had it where I've been working on something I've set my toolbox on this mm -hmm. Or I've dropped the tailgate and I've used this as a step to get back onto it. Yeah. Or like simple things, you know, I, I'm trying to do something on top. I just stand on this. Yeah. Get exactly. Up, yeah. Drop the hood yeah. and do whatever I've got to do, whether it's hanging this on, hanging the netting on it, or whatever the case is. I use, I personally use these steps a lot. Um, you want to be mindful of what your intentions are. Mm -hmm. If you're going to tow something with this, uh, we make mm -hmm. it in two mm -hmm. different two different heights. Um, mm -hmm. We make ones that are a little lower. And that's what you want if you're going to tow it. Otherwise, ah, it's just okay. too high. The pinnacle does fit hmm. in, with this length, but you do not want to run this <laughs> yeah. if you're going to tow something. I personally have no intentions of towing. Mm. As you can tell, I, I don't even have my right. trailer plug plate right. hooked up. Um, it's just dangling back there. But depending on your application, your intentions, you can go with just one side. You can go with all three. I pers mm -hmm. personally prefer all three. And is this, you were telling me you had the little spacers in for the turbos? Is that your body spacer that I'm looking at here, like a little puck? Uh, this right here, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's not mine. I didn't make them. These are made by AM General. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually picked them up a cast car, to be honest. But, yeah, those are the spacers, and, gotcha. and we ran them. And, honestly, if I was going to do it again, I think I may have gone a little higher, to be honest yeah. with you. Okay. There's nothing wrong with it. It fits fine, and basically what you were trying to do is on your intake manifold, you're trying to make sure there's enough clearance when the body comes down. If you don't have these spacers, it's literally right on top of it. Hmm. Right now, if we take the doghouse out, you've got a little bit of a gap. I just wish I had a little bit more of a gap. It's still functional. You can still mm -hmm. you know, take it off if you have to, right. but it's a little tight. It's doable. All right, let's see here. I want to stick the camera out the turret. Go for it. Oh, so you didn't show that. The, the oh, yeah. In the uh, ignition switch. That's pretty cool. I like yeah. that. I actually can't take credit for that. I saw, it some, I saw someone else doing it, but it's a great idea. Hello, gentlemen. You're showing off the fourth gear report? Look at that. That is nice. Oh, and so while I'm up here, we can see out here is the firing range for the Iraq Federal 8888 range day. So this is all the different brands, vendors, gun companies brought their uh, stuff in, set it up, and so we've been shooting their guns out at the range on the on the other side there all day. Yeah, I was kind of bungeed up because uh, he wasn't quite ready to bring it to the event yet, I think. But you know the event is scheduled, it happens whether you're ready or not. So. 
can see that Mastercraft seat in there. Go ahead and lock this in. Dude, I don't think I'm getting away from that one. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I just happened, I looked up, I was spinning it around a locket and was like, oh shit, I bet he thinks I'm aiming at him. Oh but... no, I was messing with you, man. <laughs> Did you build this thing? I did. This one is Ruben in the dark blue shirt over there. So are these straps, the, is this the way they come? No, they were all look like. worn out and everything, uh -huh. so I, I replaced them, but... Uh -huh. Just strap the body in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could. Yeah, or backpacks. Yeah. Shine some light on it? Yeah, you got some. I, I have this. You have to sing this little light of mine while you do it, though. <laughs> yeah. right. Is that better? I tried, folks. You didn't go for it. All right, so obviously we have our converter here. Mm -hmm. Our 24 volt is coming in here, positive, negative coming in here. Mm -hmm. These are the two wires coming in. Mm -hmm. It's got a built-in fuse already in it, which is important, right? So a lot of guys will say, hey, why, do I, why am I going to spend more money and buy a more expensive one when I can go buy a cheap one from Amazon for 20, 30 bucks? Well, if you go buy the cheap one for 20, 30 bucks, then you've got to go ahead and buy a fuse that you're going to put inside of here mm -hmm. before it comes to your actual yep. fuse box, right? Yep. Then it's also got a manual on-off switch. So if I turn this off, then everything 12 volt is killed. So if I, yeah. for some reason, yeah, that's good. don't want to run my 12 volt systems anymore, it's a manual shutoff. So for yeah. me, a unit like this that's already pre-built where I don't have to have an external fuse, I don't have to have an external switch, it's already all built inside of it for me. The extra, you know hour I'm going to spend or 20 minutes even I'm going to spend putting these together it's worth the money just spend a few extra dollars and get the whole package in one right then of course we're going to take our 12 volt out which is this wire right here and we're going to run it into our fuse box yep. as you can see our fuse box only has one fuse in it because that's coming into our little phone charger here that's the positive coming in the negative you can grab anywhere you want but yep. since I was so close to the battery I just ran this negative from the battery yep. but that's basically it you come in 24 volts in to your converter and 12 volts out with the fuses by themselves going into whatever your 12 volt systems are the advantage to this is it's got a built-in fuse which will shut everything off yep. and it's got a manual on off switch as well appreciate the tour man yeah yeah I don't know if you did you did you install 12 volt on your stuff uh -huh. yeah Pretty easy, man. Yep. Yeah, but I don't like to tell people this typically. When I first installed it, I got the leads backwards, mm -hmm. and it attempted to take 24 and double it to 48. Oh, and very it nice. Fried a Midland radio. Sorry, Midland. And uh, oh, it wasn't pretty. Yeah. I try to learn things the hard way whenever I can. Well, this one, honestly, if, if we were to go ahead and pop out this yellow cap, it, it literally labels it for you. Yeah. 24 volt in, yep. common ground, yep. 12 volt out. It kind of makes it, again, you know, it's just your price point. You get yep. some yep. little features, especially for a guy doing it for the first time. It's cheaper to pay the few extra dollars and not do it twice, three times, and right. burn other stuff. Cool. All right, we're about out of daylight, so thank you, sir. Appreciate thank it. Thank you for watching. Did you want to pop the hood? Show them the uh, turbo or no? Well, the, the best way to see the They've turbo would before. be... Well, the best way to see the turbo would be from the doghouse, honestly. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, obviously, that's your turbo down there. It spools, you know, the exhaust from this side. It spools from that side. It sucks in the air and it throws it to your intake manifolds and goes directly to your intake. What we plan on doing, quite honestly, is next phase is we're going to yank this off, 
We're going to run the actual air that's being sucked from the turbo out, go all the way to the front, run an aftermarket intercooler, and then bring those back into the intake manifold after they've been cooled. Additionally, your exhaust basically comes up from that side, from this side, goes into your turbo, comes out of here. This is your exhaust pipe going down. We're going to take this and we're most likely going to do a four inch all the way back stainless. Yeah. Once we've expanded this to four inch, once I've figured out the right combination between the right fuel pump and injectors that I'm going to need, I want to in increase the amount of diesel going into this. That's it for episode 9 of Show Us Your Humvee. Thanks to Theo, John, and Ruben for letting us share cool pictures and video of their trucks. If you'd like your Humvee to be featured in Show Us Your Humvee, it's pretty simple. Send some landscape-oriented pictures or a link where I can download some video of you doing cool stuff in your Humvee. Please, video, landscape format. When I get that video, I'm going to work through in the order that I receive them. So if you'd like to be featured sooner, send it in more quickly. Thank you.